Ask the magical magician, hold position Into the club with competition The great Matholomew, my spirit follow you Hand back the track, smelling smoke off the vinyl wax My approach is silent, quiet like a roach My solo voodoo is here, zap with kazoo What can you do when the fog comes behind your crew? Like Grey Skull, Skeletor, the bus is on tour Cool Keith with Indian Chief, Sahara Holding the flashlight, shaving cream in the mirror Like Yogi Berra, Big Yank, Count Bank Moving work out the country, you think I'm Big Hank 48 ways with bass, all in your face, I'll be there, in the atmosphere, super underwear, my cape aluminum, light up crews when I'm booing them, feedback mistaken, like crazy legs, I'll be breaking, rap on my back, you go to sleep, while you smoke crack, that song work, Pete, you know how to win, ultra again, set G, cool P, reunion, you know how to win, ultra again, set G, cool P, reunion, you know how to win, ultra again, set G, cool P, reunion, we know how to win, ultra again, set G, Hell, my record sells cross the border So don't you tell me what I need Cause I like to be all that I see However you take it, it can be a range of plastic Mad beat, son, I know that you're with it Plus you know I'm spitting cheaper You can quote that, son, while I go pull a leader I'm like the high setter, the ready to buy getter I like the fly sweaters, honey lips is wetter I cruise around the world, uh, collecting fancy pearls Good evening Welcome to another edition of New World Sounds. I'm your host, Mike the Millionaire, a.k.a. Mega Million. Today, we have a special guest, a special treat for you, a legend in the hip-hop industry. Oh, man. Today, we have the great, the magnificent, said G of Ultra What's good, Magnetic. my brother? Magnetic. What's good, man? Chilling, chilling, chilling. What's going chilling. on? Uh, you know, you know, hanging in there, man. Right. So, um, well, I don't know where to start, man. I mean, we got a dinosaur here. Um, I guess that's, that's you know. <laughs> I guess true. for um, for some of the young folks who might not know, uh, we have a pioneer in hip hop. Um, I'll let you, you know, give your little, um, you know, your little background about, you know, how you got started in, in the industry with Ultramagnetic. And I guess, well, let's go back even further than that. Let's go back. How did you start uh, uh, rapping? Your group's name is Ultramagnetic. Um, were you doing something before that? I was actually DJing before I uh, rapped. Mm, mm. And uh, that's how I met Keith, me and Keith. Cool Keith, for those who don't know, Ultra Magnetic, I'm Said G. Uh, we went to high school together. We went to D with Clinton High School. Mm. Uh, Keith dropped out, and me and my brother, we transferred to what is now Manhattan Center in Harlem. Okay. So Keith hooked up with my youngest brother, who's now deceased. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but uh, Keith hooked up with him, and he was cutting demos. And I was... Uh, you know, I was doing the DJing thing with our DJ, Mo Love. Mm -hmm. We had this little 12-man DJ crew. We used, wow. to do, we used to do house parties, $175 <laughs> to split with 12 dudes. Wow. Yeah. So Keith was doing his uh, demos, and he had this partner. And the kid thought he was a little better than what he actually was. Mm -hmm. He's act like he was better than Keith. And, mm -hmm. You know, on it. And I used to say, yo, Keith, uh, you need to... Push that to the side, you know, because I wanted to rap. Uh, so we got together and we started like that. Mm. And that's and then Keith came up with the name Ultra Magnetic and all uh, of that. So you were DJing at that at that yeah. time. Yeah. And then now were you doing scratching and, and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I was I was good. You know, mm. I had skills. Still got skills. Wow. But then uh, from there, that's when uh, you know, Scott LaRock came back in the scene and. KRS One, and I started working with them, and you know, from there we just go. I could go on and on about it, but you know, that's mm -hmm. basically the, the, the origins, the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know. Wow. So you were um, rapper and producer at that time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice, nice. And um, so for the the audience, um, and for like some of the young heads. Um, what were some of the names of the songs that you had out so that they can go in and, and do their research? Well, like the YouTube, Eagle Trippin', Funky, uh, 
what's another one? Papa Lodge. Uh, as far as with uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty. They can. That's enough for them to mm -hmm. get a get a little flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. I mean, yeah. cause I remember that first album that y'all put out. It was really ahead of its time. You know. Um, yeah. I remember when it dropped, and you know, we were like, I was living in Jacksonville at the time, so you know, I was, you know, I'm originally from New York, so I would come here and I would tape like. DNA Hank Love show, and, you know, I would, I would go back to Florida with the tapes, you know, <laughs> I'd be the man with the tapes, I'm like, yo, check this out, so I put on the, you know, the ultra magnetic joint, and some cats in Florida had it too, you know, and it was like, you know, for like the MCs that was there, you know, they were, you know, really looking to, you know, how, you know, your, you, you guys, you know, rap patterns and stuff like that, you know, it was, it was just, a, just phenomenal. Well, it's interesting you said that, uh, the DNA Hank Love show, because, uh, that's where we first started out at. We had uh, some some promos on there, some radio drops. You I know, remember we that. We did that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And for people who don't know, that was a show on, uh, it was on the station like kind of how this is. This is Bronx Net, Public Access. 105.9 was a sort of the same way in terms of radio. You know, it was a public access thing and those cats had to pay for their time to be on the air. and. And that's what really started hip hop because that's where you had Mr. Magic. Well, it didn't start hip hop, started hip hop on the radio. You had Mr. Magic who started on 105.9, then uh, from his popularity there, he went to WBLS, then came Red Alert, Chuck Chill Out, and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, that's, that's I remember. I mean, I remember. They, they 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 played that man. I, I quickly ran to the radio and, and hit the record, but I popped the tape in. I was like, "Oh, yo, what's that? What's that?" You know, and uh, <laughs> yeah, they was, they was playing. On See, there. I'm gonna tell you an interesting story. This shows you how uh, your friends are. We actually had a record before Eagle Tripping. Mm. It was called "To Give You Love." Oh, really? Yeah. Now it was a good record, but what happened was. I was fairly young in the studio game. So we went in there and the record was slamming. Mm -hmm. But the engineer started playing with the effects. Mm -hmm. And it was sounding real good in the room. It was sounding so good, uh, Lior Corin from Def Jam, Lior Cohen from Def Jam ran in and he wanted to sign us right there. Mm -hmm. But we thought we had a hit. Okay. So we, you know, we wanted to stay independent to get all that money ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when we got home, it didn't sound like it sounded in the studio. Mm. But uh, uh, Mr. Magic and Red Alert, they had already told us, because they were there. Well, Magic wasn't there, but Red was there. He said, I'm going to play this. So I had all my friends on the block. Yo, turn on Red. He's going to play our record tonight. Mm. And he played it. And like I said, it didn't sound like it sounded in the studio. Really? Yeah, I was so kind of. So um, we're going to take a quick break. Hold that thought right. because um, we, we got to take a break. And uh, when we come back, and we're going to finish. Uh, we're going to come back with this little piece of history for you. Yo, what's up, Kuki? Yo, what up, Set J? Yo, what's up, Trav? What's up, Sad Man? Oh, what's over there? He's ready to get bit. Yo, Chief, like, you know what? I like this beat you brought over. Yo, on. told you about it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take it into my ultra laboratory work, work and hook it, it up. Hook Yo, it up. bust this. Now that's oh, funky. Man, no, I know, man, I tell you, boy, man. we oh, all heard it. This is so funky like that I'm going to send Mo back to the turntables and you're going to follow the record at midway. Yo, get it now. And we're going to do this. It's funky. I know you're going to do this. Oh, yeah. Yo, that's right, right? I wrote some fresh stuff.
And try to make up a rhyme that fear me And let me tell you straight, I know you hear me And when I'm on the stage, you just cheer me Up another level, down below I'm going with the devil in a cage I'm on the rampage You need a number? Wanna know my age? Psych! I carry a magnum Other groups, I only will rag them and wait Why you debate? I hesitate Observe your wax styles You've been rapping, talking for miles about nothing For some of you, I think you should have noticed it's funky. Wow, man, that was funky. Strictly. Kick it loud. Yo, that was so funky. I got to get some of this. Y'all don't mind, right? Get into the action. So I can do this. Yo, Mo, keep that record spinning. I like it. Yeah, yeah that's funky. I'm going to do this, man. Show this. School them bust it out. Let's do this, man. School them like this. Bust it. Yo, get into it. We're back. I'm Mike the Millionaire, aka Mega Million, here with my guest, said G of Ultra Magnetic. So now you were telling us the story here. Uh, pick up where you left off. Oh, so I had all my boys. You know, this is back in the days, y'all young cats. Y'all, we used to have radios. They used to call them boxes. So everybody had their <laughs> big box. Yeah. You know, my, my boys, they's on their cars, 40 ounces, doing their thing. You know what we do in the hood, you know. So I said, yeah, they're going to play my record tonight, man. They said, all right, we, 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 we're here. We're going to listen. <laughs> so the record was played, and it didn't sound like it was supposed to sound. Oh, man. Yeah. Dang. So I walked outside. They still had the radio on now. Okay. <laughs> it was on Kiss. <laughs> they had it on. I said, yo, y'all heard it? They said, they didn't want to tell me it was whack. They was like, oh. Nah, man, we ain't here, man. Wow. <laughs> we ain't here. What, you know, what year was this? That was like 1981 or 82. Mm. 82, 82. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. So now on the flip side, when they played Eagle Tripping, mm. I didn't have to ask anybody, did they hear the record? <laughs> you know, Cass was running up, yo, yo. It's just dope. It's dope. Ah, yo, it's f well, they used to say fresh back then. Yeah, that's fresh. fresh. Yeah. Yo, that's hot. And then it got to the point where it's like at uh, 3 and 4 a.m. in the morning. You know, I lived in the projects on Washington Avenue in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Claremont Projects. You and your bed laying down. And Cass was driving through. And that's when the system was, you know, was no noise laws, you know. Right, exactly. So they wake up the whole block. Ultra. And you just be in your bed, you'd be like, wow. <laughs> and it wasn't the radio, because radio wasn't, you know, outside of the specialty Mr. Magic and Red Alert shows, they wasn't playing rap yet. Exactly. It took another two or three years when they started playing in the regular format. That's right. But, uh, you know, those were the special days when, when uh, music was kind of real, mm -hmm. you know, and it meant something, you yep. know. So, let's talk about that a little bit. like. Music then, you know, like I remember back in the days, right? I go to the record store, you know, and you know, the 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 man behind the counter, you know, he'd be like, "Yo, check this out, man. This this is this this is this is this is new right here." You know, it's like nowadays, you know, it's it's not that way. It's like you know, if you're not on the radio, you know, it's like you know, people they 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 minim minimalize it, you know. Well, see, it's very good you brought that up because that's kind of what I'm. See what happened, uh. The music doesn't mean as much to the people, to the young people today that it meant to the young people back then. Nothing means as much to the young people today as it did back then. Not, not 
any of their fault. It's mm. just that everything now is oversaturated. True. There's so much of it that it can't be special. Mm. You know, they have to actually hide from it sometimes. There's so much available. Mm -hmm. Whereas back then, like you said, you went to the store, you was looking for what was new. Yep. You don't have to look no more. It's in your face. Exactly. You know, cats is emailing you. They, yeah, they're texting you. Yo, check my joint out. Like me. Follow me. So it loses its appreciation. And the furthermore, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, back when we was growing up, you used to go in your boy's crib or your girl, and they had their posters up, you know, from Ride On Magazine yeah. <laughs> and rap pages. That's right. Of all the acts they liked, you know, it was, they, they loved the acts. Mm -hmm. Today, you're reduced to the MP3 player. Yeah, yeah. There's no more poster at the house. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more like faddish now. Okay, I got the hottest joint out by her or him, you know. And it's, mm -hmm. it's the appreciation is gone. So that's the main part of what's, what's missing in music, you know. Mm -hmm. And all genres of, of business and entertainment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it's, it's, it's a shame, man. Um, so now, let's talk a little bit about um, your, uh, you guys' career um, as far as you started out in 81. I, I, thought, I didn't know yeah. it was that early, um, that, that first mm -hmm. joint you were just telling me about. Um, so from then up to the present, what, um, well, give me a little bit of background about that. Time frame. Well, from there, you know, we toured the world a couple of times. You know, uh, Keith did solo albums. Uh, I've done production things, and you know, so forth and so on. Hey, well, so, so who's some of the other artists that you produced for? Well, like I said, uh, you had like KRS One, uh, R&B acts like Sybil, Jeff Red. Uh, I've uh, worked with Dougie Fresh. Uh, I can, it's too many to keep wow. going on. Yeah, I can go on, mm. you know. Interesting, wow. So now um, you're doing, um, you're working on some new, um, some projects um, as far as outside of the music, um, well, something with the youth. Well, actually they both work together because okay. it's through the music that you're gonna get the youth into the thing, you True. know. So, look out for some hot stuff coming out. But, but anyway, uh, what we're doing is, like I said, uh, what I find the problem is out here is that everybody can tell you the problem. Yo, this is how it is in the hood, and every record's accentuating it, but nobody's talking about the solutions. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, how do you fix the problems without solutions? And you got older adults telling the kids they're wrong, but nobody's showing them. Mm -hmm. Nobody's instructing them. Nobody's really taking them down the path that they're, they're going through. Because, you know, it's, 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 different. it's different out there today. Right. You know. I guess, but, well, too, I, I should have, um, before I went into that, I should have um, um, had you to go into, like, the beginnings of this project. We're going to take a break. And uh, oh, I want you okay. to go into yeah, yeah, yeah. the beginnings okay. of, because I know you started oh, yeah, we doing forgot. something yeah. with uh, Bill Cosby and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So we'll take a quick break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about that and then we'll wrap up the show. Mike the Millionaire here, back again. And we're here with said G of Ultra Magnetic. And right now, we're gonna um, backtrack a little bit and talk about the beginnings of this particular project. So I know you're working with a not-for-profit organization, and you started. Um, let's just get into the 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 the, con the conception of this. Um. Well, what happened? A uh, uh, friend of mine who's worked with me, a, a musician named Billy Patterson, otherwise known as Space Man, he came to me. He was working with Bill Cosby, so he said Cosby wants to do a hip hop project where he, you know, like I said, we start talking about solutions to problems out here on the street. Let me ask you, I'm sorry, what, what made Bill Cosby, you know, because he seems so, you know, conservative, what, what made him want to do a hip-hop uh, project? Well, it was more, more for trying to help the streets okay. than the music itself. Like I said, he, he knows that 
if he could put the right music together, it could have reached the, the, the inner city youths who he was trying to reach. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was trying to reach them through the music. Okay. So he came to me and he asked me and my friend, Billy Patterson, the producer, hip hop album, he had some former gang members from uh, Jersey and he wanted them to tell their story and so forth and so on on, on the record. So he asked me to produce the project. So we did the project, but what happened was, you know, Bill's up there in age now and he couldn't really devote the energy that was needed to make the project go over. Mm -hmm. So it kind of fizzled out. Oh, wow. But uh, I looked at it as like, why do we stop here? Mm, you know? True. Uh, so I'm taking it the next step. And, uh, and the thing with my project is, even though that project was good, mine is going to be more direct. Okay. Less, uh, less bubble gum, mm, mm, you know. Mm. More, more uh, with the with the topics on the street today, because uh, you know Bill's very particular. Mm -hmm. He don't want you to mention certain names and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Whereas I want to say a name, I'm gonna say a name. <laughs> you know? So, so you know, it is what it is. Yeah. So, so we're gonna do this, and uh, cause uh, you know it's to the point now where. It's just too much out here. It's like I said, uh, just like I said, every industry is oversaturated. Even, you know, streets like that now. Everybody's a hustler now. Yeah. You know, it used to be when you was a street soldier, you actually made some good money. Mm -hmm. Now, because there's 10 other cats on your block, you need a part-time job, True. you know. So, so there's a lot of things they got to be shown in order to get them to change. Mm -hmm. You just can't tell somebody to change and then don't show them nothing. Exactly. They're exactly. looking at them like, okay, you sounds good, but uh So we're gonna you know, we're just not gonna tell them what they're doing. We're going to be able to, to point them in directions, cater to their needs mm. individually. Okay. Not just something, do this and do that and don't do that and don't do this. You know, none of that. You know, we're going to sit down and say, well, what is it you want to do mm. with your life? You know, and, you know, and that's why I work with the nonprofit agencies, because in certain cases, I might be able to point a certain individual that way. Like, well, this agency will help you reach out and contact and get get started where you want to go or. You know, but it's more than that, you know. Like in some ca some cases, I might tell a cat, you need God, you know, or send you to the local <laughs> church, you because I work with them too. Some cats I might send, say, hey, you need to go to the service. It's according to the individual's needs, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, it's that's how we want to do it. We want to cater to these youths because nobody, nobody's catering to them. They're telling them things, and mm -hmm. then it's not making sense in their world. So basically... Um what you're trying to do is basically they come to you and you point them in certain um, directions as far as like yeah. if they, they need to, this particular resource, they go here or there. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, all you nonprofit organizations and ministers from churches who want to reach out and work with me, you can reach me at sedg3000 at gmail.com. Said G, C E D G E E, the number 3000 at gmail.com. Get in contact and we can put this program together because it's about time we do something and stop looking for somebody else to do something. That's yeah. very true. We got to take you know. the fight to the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's great, man. Yeah. Your old man said, um, you know, thank you so much for coming through, you know. And, um, you know, don't be a stranger, you know, as long as I have a show here, you always have a home. Hey. You know. And for those of you out there, you know, you can always catch me spinning on the one and twos at Suncofa's. That's on 174th on the corner of Southern Boulevard in the Bronx. What time? That's, we start about eight. But, you know, you know how it is. You get there when you get there. Mm -hmm. you know? And that's what, uh, what days? Oh, that's on Fridays. Every Friday, your boy's in, in motion. You know? <laughs> That's how we do. Said G on the wheels of steel. All right, so, yeah, that's another show. Um, 
New World Sounds, you know, we bring you, you know, we promote music and culture and um, community, you know, we, um, that's what we're about, you know, we're about, you know, positivity, you know, whatever's going on positive in the community, you know, uh, uh, we want to uh, uh, bring that to light, you know, and here on the show, you know, that's what we do. And um, until the next time, Yo, I'm Michael Millionaire, signing off. Man, man. You might as well start this course line. Y'all with that? Yeah, yeah let's do this. Yeah. Yo, so how we gonna do this? Yo, matter of fact, you know how we gonna do it? Yo, Yo what's up, y'all? We in the Ultra Lab, man. We got this beat, bro. Yo, what's up, Kuki? Yo, what up, Set J? Yo, what's up, Trav? What's up, Sad Man? What's up, man? He's ready to get bit. Oh, Yo, Chief, like, you know what? I like this beat you brought Yo, up. Yo, you about it? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take it into my Ultra Laboratory Word, work and hook it, it up. Man. Yo, it up. bust this. Now that's oh, funky. Man. No, I know, man, I tell ya, boy, we all oh, heard it. This is so funky like that we'll send more back to the turntables. And you gonna call the record that mix with Yo, get it now. And we gonna do this. It's funky. I know you want to write this. Rubber, right, Kuki? Yo, that's right, right? I wrote some fresh stuff. Thank you.